All right, so I'm going to talk today about how to sneak school in so it doesn't have to feel like you're sitting at a table doing workbooks and a teacher and a student and all this stuff. Let's talk about some ways to sneak in some learning where the kids don't think it's school, but they still have fun. So the first one, and this is where you're first going to go, really, reading. Okay, so reading. Books, yes, yes, yes. Books are often associated with school. So if we can shift that a little bit and make books more about fun instead of about school, then we're going to probably be able to sneak in more learning than they really know. So one way to do that is to, if you have, for example, some really good entertaining or bright colored or really good photograph books specifically on nonfiction subjects, DK makes a great bunch of collection of books for this. I don't have any to show you today. They're all downstairs on my bookshelf and I'm hiding upstairs, but they make great, beautiful pictures, like absolutely eye catching. And they're, and if you have kids that can't read or don't like to read, they've got little short texts, but the pictures are the primary thing. So what you can do is put them out on the table. So if there's a subject that you're studying in school, if you have books on the table that will catch their eye and they'll be interested in looking at them on their own, you can put it on the table and get, this is called strewing. So this is what some homeschoolers like to do. They kind of throw little bits of the topic around the house for kids to naturally explore on their own because if it's there they may engage with it so that's one option so that's reading and putting books out the other is if you're reading not uh, fiction books you can do them for fun nobody says it has to be done during school time nobody says it has to be mandated you must do one hour of reading today because that's what kills unless you have a kid who loves it but if you if you don't it kills the interest in reading if you assign it, if you require it, if you force it to be school, if you need there to be book reports, that's what kind of kills it. If you want to sneak school in this way, what you need to do is make it fun. So read at bedtime together. I read, mentioned that the other day. Read at bedtime together. Discuss the conversations about what's going on in the book. Books, fiction books, can be really amazing resources for learning things. For example, if you're reading Little House on the Prairie, the first one of the book, The Big House in the no, Little House in the Big Woods, the very first chapter of that is all about how they prepared for winter with food for the winter and in the 1870s, right? If you read that, it explains, it gives kids this very vivid and real and rich picture of what pioneer life was like because we don't have to do that. This was a conversation I just had with my kids this week as we started reading the book. Um, it's that we don't have to deal with that winter experience because we are familiar with going to the grocery store to get whatever we need, whenever we need it. We don't have to spend months and months and months killing, prepping, baking, cooking, all that stuff. So that's one example. There's so many examples of how kids can sneak learn through fiction. You can learn history, you can learn science, you can learn geography. To do it, you know that Around the World in 80 Days book? I actually was like, oh, it's gonna be boring. It was really fun to read. It was really fun to read. And you get to see the world and different places of the world and different cultures and that kind of thing. So you can sneak in so much through reading. The next idea is board games. Okay, so the first one is reading, the second is board games. So the board games, okay, yeah, there's some that are very obviously educational. Scrabble is fantastic, even if you have non-readers who are just learning words. For example, if you give them letters and you ask them to build words with them, they can start doing the little basic words. You don't have to keep points, you don't have to do anything. Just get them to use the tiles to make words. Um, you can also, and then obviously, Scrabble also includes math because you have to do points when you get older and you have to learn things like addition and multiplication because you have double the points and triple the points and letter doubling and all that stuff. So it's a lot of math, which you might not think about really because we just do it, right? But when we're trying to add in things that include a lot of educational content, sometimes just having a simple board game can really trigger the concepts and understanding of a particular subject. Um, there's other things like bananagrams. That's good for language as well. Monopoly is fantastic because it teaches money sense and adding on the fly and understanding values and trade and it's, Monopoly, even though it's annoying and it's long and it gets really boring and drawn out, <laughs> it can be a fantastic tool to sneak in learning. Okay. Poker. Okay. If you don't like betting, I can see that could be trouble, but honestly, poker is so much math. It's so much probability. It's so much everything. If you're willing to play poker with your kids and teach them card games like that, you will find that it's a great way to learn math on the fly. 
There are some other kids games that really just work on, so like for example, Sorry. Sorry is just a fun kids game, right? Let's think about what it includes for learning. It includes a lot of math because they have to be able to count up the dice that they roll. They have to be able to, or, oh, you don't roll a dice in Sorry. You pull up a card, I think. So they have to be able to count the number of squares if they're little. They have to be able to strategize a little bit if they're older. There also has to do with um, trouble is the same. So you have to double up the dice. Any game that involves dice that have to be added up, those ones are great. I know we've got a couple of games in our house that I don't think are available anymore, which is really disappointing, but there's things like a fraction game that you can play where you, the kids are just playing. They're just having fun, but they're understanding concepts that they might not get if I was trying to sit down at a table with a math workbook. Okay, so board games are a fantastic way to sneak in school and it makes the kids feel like you're having fun and you're there and you're spending time with them and you're making it a family activity so it doesn't feel like school. The last one I'm going to mention is video games. But Lisa, technology's bad. And my house technology is not banned. Uh, we do have periods where there are times where I have to cut them off a little bit and we, but we don't really limit video games unless they are turning into little gremlins, which happens. Um, so then we have to settle down and back up a bit. But what do video games teach kids? A lot. In fact, you could probably have an entire TED talk and there probably is all about the educational value of video games. Now, let me explain a couple of ideas. For example, if you're my kids who love video games, my little guys are learning to read through video games. A lot of my children have wanted and have been excited to and developed early reading through video games. They under they can now recognize words such as play and save and they start to understand and recognize words that they see all the time on the screen. The other thing is that they are doing things like writing and spelling. So for example, in Minecraft, they're trying to make signs and I get a lot of time. How do I spell? How do I say? How do I do this? So there's lots of spelling involved as well. When they want to save their worlds in Mario World for Mario Maker, for example. Now, the other thing I was going to say is it's not just about reading. It also has a lot of math. And so, for example, things like Mario, just regular Mario, kids have to pay attention to patterning sequences. In order to be able to jump to the platform at the right time to avoid the bad guy, they have to see the patterning sequence that happens so they can get the rhythm, they can get to the place that they want to get. That's just another example. Um, also in things like RPG games, role-playing games, where you have a character that has stats and has abilities and has bars with health and magic potion power uh, magic points etc etc you have to be able to understand math because you need to see how these points affect this and if i use this magic then i'm only going to have this many points left over and i won't be able to revive myself if i die blah 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 okay rpg make are fantastic there's so many other things though outside of that for example my one son loves japanese based rpg make games so he has decided to learn Japanese because he wants to be able to be encouraged and excited. He wants to understand a little bit more about what he's reading and what he's hearing and why people are talking like this. And he does a lot of subtitles. So don't be surprised if your kids suddenly decide that they want to learn Japanese if they get into video games. Okay, so that's one thing as well. Um, another thing about reading is that a lot of kids want to learn how to read so they can read the walkthroughs. So they can find uh, the wikis and understand how to beat this level. And they learn a lot of research skills because they want to learn how to defeat this level or beat this boss or how do I get this or is there any cheat codes? They want to learn how to research and it's a fantastic way to sneak in learning. So there you go. There's three ideas. First, reading. Second, board games. And third, video games. If you don't turn them into school and you don't force them to happen, kids will learn more than you expect. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. I will be happy to answer them and we'll chat a little bit more. I hope that this has been helpful. Remember, learning doesn't just happen in a textbook, in a workbook. It's everywhere in our life. All right, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.